and welcome to episode number 54 of the Optic Podcast. 54 in a row. We haven't missed a row. We've never, in a row. We've never <laughs> ever missed a, uh, like a week crazy. of recording. We're almost on our 15th fly cast. Kudos to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> fly cast is really just. Where are we at? Wait. Have, he did, said we almost went around our 15th fly cast. In a row. Have you, did you guys do one last week? No. Uh, Fucking streaming. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's been all me. It's like when I'm not streaming, I'm just like thinking about. I don't streaming. really want to do anything. I struggle with that, especially with grinding like streams. I get done, and I'm like, I didn't want to streaming. Play games. Like sh- streaming is just exhausting. Did you get people don't video? understand what, like talking to th- these invisible people for like eight hours to twelve hours to yeah. sixteen hours. Like it's exhausting. Whoa. That's the that, that 24 hours. That, that <laughs> is literally. 48 hours. Bro, I, I would, I would, I would go into this chat and for, for, for you guys to know, no, Nick doesn't have like a set schedule. He should have a set schedule where like I'm gonna go live at 2 p.m. from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's what that's what I'm gonna do my stream. Come on, come enjoy. He he doesn't. He does the amount of hours that he would do in a week. As impossible as it may seem, he would do it in two days. <laughs> and I would log on, and, and the first thing I saw, this is a routine that I do as, as, as the older brother, it's just in my nature. I log in at twitch.tv forward slash BTH Maniac. I hate when people say forward slash. Can I just say that? Like, what? Why don't you just say slash? slash. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, go ahead. Well, there's a backlash. Backslash. Backslash. We'll get into the backslash later. later. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll be like, literally, I don't, I don't care. I don't look at his viewers. See, I don't care at the chat. I literally just go into chat and type in uptime. uptime. It's <laughs> it's so annoying because everyone in the chat is like just at hacks, at hacks. Yeah, hacks, hacks. I'm like, great. Uptime is like hacks, and it says like. Uh, Maniac has been warming up for 23 <laughs> hours, <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus, get a hold of yourself. Yeah. I can't imagine. That was only for, like, a, I think something special happened. I think I hit, like, was, a certain was, amount of subs. It was the Tuesday of the month. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think something happened. Well, what, what's worse is that somebody would, like, has a fake Hex account. Apparently, and then uh, they tricked him. Well, no, I think whenever you donate, you can just you type can in whatever name. Whatever is, name. Right. And like, I think Hex was like just joined the chat. So, and then someone donated five dollars and said, if you finish, and that was at like 18 hours. They were like, if you finish the 24, uh, I'll donate 1K. And I was like, he usually doesn't support that. <laughs> I'm anti- I was that. like, but if that's, I think I said, like, if that's really you, like, I think I'm going to have to finish 24 <laughs> hours. Here, you know what? We, we've been getting a bit of complaints about our, our mics. And I just noticed everyone's except for Jack's is wrong. Yours is pointing at Nick. Nick is pointing at you. <laughs> Mine was pointing at y'all. Look at that. How, how am I? You're much I just, better. I I'm, just I'm much assume better. it's good. But... No, bro. You, <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> you, you just put it under your <laughs> face. <laughs> like... Thinking of everything he's learned, he's like, <laughs> I'm just assuming it's good. <laughs> he he had that uh that Matrix moment where like they plug in like this pro like the, the like the learn or what is it lesson they plug it directly to your brain and you know how to do Taekwondo oh. or you know how to do like karate. I wish you could do that with languages. I wish you could do that. Period. With yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we'll get there at some point. I think we'll get there. At some you think? Point. Imagine if, if imagine if you were able. Now we're gonna get into the theory part of the uh, in the in, of the of the podcast. Imagine if you were able to put something in that says like you love going to the gym, and you love the fact that you look like ET when you take your shirt off right now because you know you're gonna convert it, and then bam, you just love going to the gym. I mean, that's like what the show Westworld is. If you ever watched West, like Westworld, the whole thing behind it is like the consciousness, and they create the hosts and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very familiar. I'm not on season two yet. It's it's so good, but literally, it's like I mean, just imagine that kind of mixed into our reality a little yeah. bit. Of like, you know every language, and like you can just adapt like that. Like that'd be crazy. Yeah. Well, I, what what I don't understand, and I understand culture and values and all that, but why haven't we created a universal language? Why right. is, why is sign sign language? You know, specific for a language instead yeah. of creating a a a, a setup. <coughs> That's always what I. It's like this means chair. That's always what I yeah. didn't understand. Like my my mom like Wait minored it. in sign language or something like that. Like she knew it really well. And when the first time she told me that, because I, I thought sign language was a universal language, mm-hmm. but 
sign language is specific for certain languages. So then you have ah. sign language translators that know two different Wow. Sign languages. Like, how crazy is that? Like, there's like a Spanish. <laughs> there's a yeah. Spanish, and then there's a French. <laughs> a French. <laughs> there's a Spanish, then there's a French. <laughs> it's a little more dainty. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. perfect. No, that's. Uh, I didn't know that. That's... I, I actually had no idea about that either. Yeah. I but, think... well, think about it. It's, shouldn't that be a thing? I mean, I think yeah. people yeah, have brought up a ton language, of times, yeah. like, certain things that should just be universal, like currencies and, and this and that, you know, like, just to make it. Make it easier to go around places, like just and to, do things. Yeah. I hate that I have to when I want to go to Europe. I have to think about is it the euro do or math. the pound or the croissant, yeah. and then like <laughs> what the. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. Is, is it? <laughs> <laughs> he just made he has so, no idea. You know what's crazy? I catch myself <laughs> making stuff up just to be funny, but then I believe it, and I'm like, it, is it? Oh, I, we, we know. <laughs> <laughs> We deal with you every day. Is that we really? know you do that. Yeah. It's like I, I get mad at you for something that I made up in my in my mind. Just and I'm like, wait, did, did they really do that? I'm like, no, they did it. <laughs> do you ever do you ever have a dream that seems so real and then you wake up and you're like, how the hell did I believe that? Yes. Like last night, I had a dream that I, I was, my grandpa flew me over New York City in a styrofoam airplane and I was laying down in the back and I said, please steady it out so that I don't fall or slide to the back and then we stall out. And I woke up and I was like, what? (laughs) But then I'll have other dreams where I'm like, oh, well, I know this is a dream while I'm dreaming. Well, that's like lucid dreaming. That's one thing that I've always been interested in trying. (coughs) Do you know, like, have you ever heard of what like lucid dreaming is? Like how it all is? Like, do you know like how people start lucid dreaming? Like how like the the process that people have like learned? I like researched it a little bit just out of boredom on the internet, but it's like and because uh, you love the movie Inception, go on. That is my favorite movie too. But basically, uh, people like and I'm probably butchering this a little bit, but I know one of the core parts is like if you want to start to get into it, you need to. There's dreams that we've all had that we've had multiple times in some way. You know, like I remember some from my childhood, yeah. whatever. Um, but like the way you're supposed to like start it is. You have a notebook by your bed, and the second you wake up when your dream is fresh, whatever it is, you just write down what happened. So you can, your brain starts to get used to being able to be like, oh, I remember that. Because then by the midday, how many times you've woken up and like, I had the crazy stream, and then if you don't tell someone right away, by midday you're like, I forgot what it was. And yeah. then I remember vaguely what kind of happened, but you don't remember it. Ten minutes later. Exactly. I forget. So those, yeah. so like to start lucid dreaming, you're literally supposed to wake up and immediately be like, I was on a bicycle, driving down the street, did this, did that, and you write it all down so that like, you keep it in your mind so that next time you're in a scenario similar, you can be like, I'm dreaming. And then lucid dreaming is like controlling everything that happens. Like knowing you're dreaming, not waking yourself up, and then being like, a mountain's going to appear over here or whatever. And just being able to do so it. So when you were a kid, you couldn't lucid dream? Because I could all the time. But I feel like that, that explains the NIAC side of you. Yeah. Well, when, when you don't sleep, it's a lot what? of you. You think that you're in reality. <laughs> well, no, I was a kid. So, I, I do write mine down, and I've deleted a whole bunch of them, and I start it over, okay? And I, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, look over, and see Jude, and I'll be like, literally, dreaming of a fish, eating a fish, eating about a psychic. That's what I wrote. Eating about a psychic. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That, 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 that's that just like really being tired. <laughs> No, 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 and wake up, it. tired, like, uh, like I, had, I, had, I had the one that I just deleted said, uh, drinking water out of a jarro, which is like a, a Mexican like uh, jar, while looking at the moon, and the moon was uh, just just weird stuff like that. And then you try to like you try to Google like what it means, and then you're just like, I'm not that negative. That is not like the truth, you know. But I will say this. Speaking of dreams, and then something that that happened during while I was working in the mortgage industry, I was I was I was I was killing it, right? I was setting records, I was you know I was making money, but every for for about a year straight, I had dreams about seeing tornadoes, like tornadoes everywhere, tornadoes, tornadoes, tornadoes everywhere, and then they would they would be coming towards the house, and then I would I, I would be like looking at stuff, and then all this, and then I would look up, I, I would look it up, and what it meant, and it said that. 
the plans that you have now are never going to go according to plan and you're not going to, you know, the, the plan's not going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the time, I'm like, I was thinking, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to become a millionaire off of mortgages. Like, this is going to be my, this is going to be like the thing that makes me rich, right? And I would look it up, look it up, and, and, and every single, it got to a point to where I would be in my dream coming out of a Walmart and I would see a little kid with a, with a hair dryer making little uh tornadoes? tornadoes yeah you're weird yeah no but but the the mortgage industry ended up crashing and i ended up not becoming a millionaire off of that so it was it, it, it does work yeah i used to i think i used to have anxiety when i was younger and i think a lot of the dreams i a lot of the nightmares i had because i i don't really have many positive dreams that i remember i don't know about you guys i just didn't <laughs> have uh, if I, I'll either not dream, I'll either not dream, yeah. like 90% of nights I won't dream, 95% of nights I just won't even think of a dream when I wake up. <clears throat> but then there's the, a few nights where I'll have like, a, I'll, I'll know like I wake up in distress because of a bad dream I had of some sort. And when I was younger, I think I had anxiety and I always wished that, I think I wished that my house had, now that I'm older I think to kind of like look at it from that perspective and I think that I wished that I had an alarm system like my grandma's had, because my grandma's house had an alarm system where you open the door and it was locked, and, and we didn't have that at my house. So I think that I always, most of my bad dreams were about like intruders trying to break in, mm -hmm. or me getting like kidnapped as I go into my basement. Like that was one of the main ones that I remember is I would walk down my stairs, and it was just like a normal night. I'd see my dad asleep, and like he would be in, like uh, just asleep on the couch, and I'd be like, and I'd get to the second to last stair. And a guy would like come out from around the corner and like put me in a bag, and that's how my dream would like end. And I'd wake up like, yeah. freaking out. That's crazy. Yeah. That like thinking back at the stuff when you were a child, of just how you can, ex I guess like find a reason of why you are a certain way of like how how you were raised and yeah. stuff like that. Like how how much that affects you long term. Do you really think it does? Yeah. Like, 100 percent. My if, and you can ask Jude about this because I, when I was growing up, in we, we used to live in a in a small house. It was it was it was a small house and it was on a hill, right? And people in the middle of the night, my my dad used to work the night shift. In the middle of the night, people would jump on our roof, and would be like running around. And we like I, my mom would freak out because it's just me and my sister who say you're younger than me. And at the time, I had to have been like six, and she was five. And people would jump on our on our roof. And sometimes we'll go into our into our backyard or patio and try to steal shit. And my mom would be like screaming for my uncle who lived next door. But because of that experience as that, I am like the worst. Like right now, my, my house at, at home had a, a security system. My house now has not only a security system, but cameras fucking everywhere. And it is because of how you grew up that it for sure like messes you up forever. Like imagine if Jack had anxiety for life now because... He didn't have an alarm system like his grandma. Yeah. Oh no, I used to have. I I I went to therapy one, like for my anxiety stuff when I was maybe twelve, thirteen, because there reached a point in my life where now I can. Uh, do I get nervous about certain things? Like yeah, a lot of people get clammy hands when turbulence happens on planes because yeah. it's just like a. Yeah. I think I don't think anyone's a fan of turbulence. You know, yeah. it's not comfortable. It's not but hitch. I used to be like not hitch. But I used to be like deathly yeah. afraid of flying and stuff. So you're sleeping. That's true. Uh. But I got to a point where I, I, I realized now, looking back, that I got to a, an age where I like had like a, not like an awakening moment, but I became, and this is how I am a lot today, is like I'm just a realist with things. Yeah. And I like woke up one day and was like, got in that mentality of like, I used to be afraid to sleep in my friends' houses. And I was like. Why? The hell? I, used, I, I, I don't know. I used to just be away from home. And yeah. then I, exactly, I was like. They sleep there every night. You're not going to get killed there. They sleep there every night. And then I was like, I can sleep at friends' houses. I used to be afraid of getting lost. And then I was like. But Jack, you've been alive all these years. No one gets lost in their car and never finds their way home. Fine. There wouldn't be pilots and flight attendants if planes yeah. were crashing left yeah. and right. Yeah. And I then I just realized that and I was like, now I'm not afraid of those things. I, I do that too. Uh, probably like the first, because the first time I ever flew was to an event. So I went like 20 years not, never being on a plane. Yep. And, uh, you know, it took me like a, a year to be like, Every single time I'm getting on, my hands start getting sweaty as I like am bo like as I'm walking to yeah. the plane. So I'm like, shit, man. And then so I'll sit, so I sit down, and then one time I looked around, and I was just like, and and we started hitting turbulence, and I looked around, and like I see people sleeping, and I'm like, okay. And then I looked beside me, and I see this kid, and he's just playing on his iPad, and he's like a, he's like nine. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, 
There's okay. no way God will crash this one. The, the, the <laughs> well, it was more cage. of just like, I'm not going to be scared if like everybody else is used to this. So. Exactly. You know what I used to do, and I'm an asshole for this. Um, <laughs> I already know what you're going to say. So, like, Nade will be sleeping, <laughs> right? And then, like, as soon as turbulence would happen, I would wake him up. And then oh. I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like, he'd be, and you know how he wakes up? Uh, yes. Bro, that one time, terrible <laughs> Bro, this that. one time, it smelled like something was burning. And then, and then he's like, he's like, yo, what's that smell? I'm like, I don't know, but I just saw this lady like oh jet to the Oh my God. I like the worst person I, I ever. I, am, I, am. I hate you. That is I am, terrible. I, you, I am, I am. But, you know, the, the, the reason that I was he doing it. He said he would look over at Nate and go, oh yeah. my God. What? <laughs> No, yeah. That's so messed up. No, but but I only said that because he would say that to me and Big Timer. If we were going somewhere, he'd be like, damn, that sucks. We're gonna And I'm like, why would you say that as we're boarding the plane? Right? So my 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 thoughts behind that is that like if I scared him enough, it would like get him over his fear because you know nothing ever happens. Like turbulence never yeah. never happened. And um, instead he's just terrified to fly. Yeah. But, <laughs> Dude, come on, bro. It is it is a little bit messed up. But, hey, that's what friends do. The, the, the I, I will say this, though. When I was a little kid, I was like four, four years old, my aunts were watching a movie called The Exorcist. I didn't know what it was. I feel like everyone has, well, not everyone, but... That movie in particular, bro. I to I this day, to it. this day, and I swear to you, to this day, I don't like talking about ghosts. I don't like hearing stories about ghosts. I don't like watching scary movies that have to do with like paranormal, paranormal stuff. Yeah. If it's alien scary movies <laughs> like The Fourth Kind, or if it's uh, you know scary movies like uh, a thriller where there's a Friday the, the whatever. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't get mad. I don't get scared because it's just like a serial killer trying to you know whatever. Yeah. But if it's like paranormal. I don't, like I don't watch it. Paranormal activity. I don't watch it. I don't listen. I don't even. My, my sister's like, "Hey, are you still weird about this thing?" I'm like, "Yeah, I don't care what happened. I don't want to know what happened. Yeah. Don't even text me about it anymore." I, I literally crazy. am to this day like that. That that big of a, a, a so yeah, I, I completely. I feel understand. like it, I feel like it probably has to come down to the fact that like that's just something that you can't physically defend yourself against. Like aliens and, and this, like yeah. if you if it came down to it and you had a weapon and you need and there yeah. was an intruder, you could physically like defend yeah. them yourself if you had a gun, right? But like a, a paranormal activity thing, you like a ghost, that yeah. does nothing. On, like you man. can't. They could just be like, okay, <laughs> peace, and like fall through the wall, like the like that. <laughs> 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 That's see, just imagine that each time you think of a ghost. That, <laughs> no, I get, I get. When it comes to spirits and all that, like I don't even, I don't even listen to it. I, yeah. I'm even sometimes afraid to go to church because I remember there was a church scene in The Exorcist where it was just like that, and I'm just, I, I just don't deal with. See, it. I don't. Do you guys like, I get the, I'm getting the chills right now, bro. Yeah. Just Do you guys it. have a movie that like fucked you up, like scary Exorcist. wise? Besides, I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, I just, I've always hated scary movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. I tell You're people that scary the scariest guy. movie I've ever seen is Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf, and they're like, no, oh, that's, <laughs> that's like a that's good movie. It's because you say, we're Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah, that was literally the scariest movie I've ever seen. I got scared at Scary Movie 2, because in Scary Movie 2, what? they reenact. <laughs> the comedy? Yeah. <laughs> no, really. I'm not kidding. They reenact. The ring, where the yeah. girl clocks uh, the TV, and that was like one of the only scenes I had seen, like mm -hmm. I, had, I saw at the time. And I was like 13 or 14 back in my anxiety days, and I saw that, and I was like, <gasps> and like that's all I needed to see. I don't care if it was a comedy. Yeah. I, all I needed to see was a creepy looking thing crawl through a television. And I was <laughs> she like, she starts beating her. Yeah, up. <laughs> uh, but I was like, that was it. I, I had already tuned in. I, I tuned uh -huh. out at that point. That was a scary. That's still a scary movie for me. And, and I just crazy. remember, I just had a flashback. They, I, I remember them making me watch um, the beginning part of uh, Poltergeist, and I remember like going like at least like 20 to 25 minutes into the movie before realizing that they were trolling me again. And I just like got up and laughed. But I remember like being just like scared. Oh, to like put in perspective like how I feel about these types of films, like the, the movie Inception, my favorite movie of all time, you know when, uh, when the girl's traveling through the elevator and the wife is like stuck in those floors? Yeah. And like the wife always like turn, like the wife like turns and sees her like in the elevator and, and like it like shocks you. Like I get, I get like, scared in those moments <laughs> yeah and i get yeah they're trying to do that to set the tone but like jump scares no you know no i was about to say if you played like a scary game no i don't play, that's why I, don't play be, I can't do i can't i can't do jump scares i would tell i would tell my uh, my like fraternity brothers at school like because they would always try to like we do pranks or whatever yeah. i'd be like i'm gonna be very honest with each and every one of you like if you do something to like try to jump scare me i will punch you in the face like <laughs> no remorse i will i will literally try to knock you out cold and they never did, like, they would never do it because, like, that's the one thing. I, I don't care. Oh, it's so funny. No. 
I would punch <laughs> you in the face. <laughs> You know how many times I've like tuned it, like I'll be like scrolling Twitch at the end of a stream and I'll like. At least we got a warning. I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll yeah, like right? click like Ava's stream, for example, and she'll be playing a scary game. Whenever she plays a scary game, yeah. all of her alerts are like, ah! Yeah. yeah. So I'll just be like, oh, like, let's see what everyone's doing, you know? Oh, and let's go to Ava's stream. Wait, so, so even that happened. bothers you? Yeah, I'm like this. Next stream. <laughs> wow. I hate that shit so much. I did not know that about you. That is my least favorite thing in the world. Um, when I saw uh, Paranormal Activity, I, I, I don't. Anyone remember what year that came out? Paranormal uh, Activity? Uh, like 2008, something like that. I'm just trying to remember how old I was. I don't remember because I didn't see it. I was that a, movie messed me up the first because one? I thought it was real. Dude. I thought it was real footage. <laughs> that movie, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, wait, that movie <laughs> fucked me up. I thought what's, it was real footage. Wait, what's the name of, the, of that one movie that was like a reality thing? The Blair, 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 Blair Witch, Witch Project. Project. Yeah. Yeah. I watched that with... Uh, with uh, with my friends, and I thought that I was I was gonna get over this fear thing. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah. yeah, cause I had never had. I well, I think Paranormal Activity was the first scary movie I ever watched, and it was on Halloween night, and we we were watching a bootleg version of it, and I, it just dist- like it fl- like literally for a night like three nights straight, I was just like I can't get it out of my head. There's like the scene where she stands over the bed and then it like fast forwards time and she's standing over the bed for like five hours Duh. just staring at the guy. And I'm just, I could not get that Bro, out of my head. Bro, you saying that messing with me now. <laughs> I would literally go to, I will be like going to sleep and I'll have like a bad thought like that <laughs> in my head and I don't know how you guys are, but I will literally be like, let's say I'm trying to nod off and for some reason one of my last thoughts or one of my thoughts is just like a bad one. Yeah. I will literally be like, I gotta reset. Like I'll lean back over, go back on my phone, scroll Twitter, change my thoughts, and then go to fall asleep again. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> that, no, I, I because understand. I'm like I can't go to sleep thinking like something terrible is like what could be my last thought that night because then I'm worried it's gonna like give me a bad dream. Damn, I, I don't never have, have any of those thoughts. I don't have I don't have <laughs> dreams where I'm like. It was great. We were like on a beach, hanging out, drinking beers. It was like me. Yeah, I don't really remember. I don't have dreams like that. I just don't. I mean, maybe I do, but I don't. I don't think I have any happy dreams. Right, bro. Does anyone? Yeah. I mean, besides like sex dreams. You have sex dreams? Still, bro? (laughs) Well, how long has it been? I mean, it hasn't been too long. (laughs) Well, it has to. The only time you have that is when you have built up uh, frustrations. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, you. I wouldn't necessarily say that. Well, that's exactly what it is. But the, the one dream that I do have is that... I think you're thinking if It just happens. Dreams. Like, jumping, and then, you like... For example, I was on a bike, and then I was going over, like, uh, like little bumps. And then one of them, like, was so high that I just shot up Dog. in the air. And that's, that's those are the ones I have a lot of. Those are the ones that, like, as you're, like, dozing off, and you're, like, in that twilight zone. Yeah. And then, like, I, I, I'll have one randomly, like, once a year where I'll be, like, falling asleep. I'll be right in that twilight zone, like, about to fall asleep. And a soccer ball will get kicked at my face, and I'll be like this, like jump, yeah. And then I'm like, my heart's <laughs> racing for a second, like that, like kick wakes me back up. Yeah, I'll have I'll, I'll have something like that, like rarely, rarely. Okay. Um, but like another topic with that, like not ghosts, but like the UFOs, like yeah. UFO and alien type stuff. Yeah. My uncle, who is like, he is the most doesn't make up stuff like this ever. No experience <laughs> of it, you know, like the last person to ever say something like this. His story is he was once at a, he does a, a lot of motorcycle trips with my aunt, and they were on one of their motorcycle trips, and they had just finished eating, like, dinner, and it was, like, a show type thing, so everyone was kind of, like, walking out of this restaurant at the same time, and they were in the Midwest somewhere, and he said, like, they walked outside, and, like, this something, like, hovered overhead, and he doesn't even drink. My uncle doesn't drink. He's the one that made up the bet with all the nephews to not drink until they're 21. Uh... The, it like hovered overhead and then he said it like disappeared in like an instant and everyone there was like and they like rep- people like reported it and stuff like that and like to this day he still can't like shake it it was that crazy of an experience um what's the name of that movie the forgotten have you seen it with uh, uh with that with that redhead lady mm-hmm. the forgotten is is by far the there was a, this one scene it's, it's an alien movie and what happens is that the aliens are creating this i'm not spoiling it they're they're creating this this uh, this test on on hum- on a mother's love, okay, essentially, mm-hmm. and what they do is that they abduct a a kid from a mom, and in the majority of the cases you you can never 
disconnect the mom from the kid. Like the mom instinctually, instinctively knows that. Yeah. That, anyway, there's this one scene where she's talking to somebody about like the problems of the aliens, and then the guy's like, "I believe you 100 percent." And all of a sudden, he gets sucked out. So imagine just being sucked, not sucked out, but just being lifted. Right, it's real. The the most real, real abduction I've ever seen. It's just like literally, he's talking outside. He's like, and then you see him like, oh, like imagine falling but going upwards. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was scary, bro. I was like, I'm like, oh my god, that was like one of the best, like, feelings I've ever had in a movie that was that real. That yeah. that, that so. Anyway, enough, enough, enough alien stuff. Uh, we we promised that we we're gonna talk about 100 million dollar. What is it? Prize pool tournaments for Fortnite? Prize pool th for this year. Okay, for, for this year. For the next year. So I, I want to break it down into, into two different topics, right? What it does for esports, and, and then we'll talk about the breakdown and, you know, the probability. All right, well, let's talk about that. What does that do for esports to know that literally Fortnite comes in and how many CWLs is that? It's 25 seasons. 25 seasons of the <laughs> Call of Duty World League equals 100 million, and this has been going, I mean, we've had been doing Call of Duty for like 10 year plus. Um, what does that do for esports to have like that sort of commitment from from Fortnite? Because there's no way in the world that Fortnite makes more money, no, the Epic Games makes more money than yeah, Activision Blizzard. They probably, oh, no, they probably don't. Bro, Bacon, the Bacon Camel in Black Ops 2 was like a... Uh, okay, but they, Epic sells the engine. Epic sells an entire engine. So that's where, is, yeah, yeah. So that's where they get. If you're talking about just Fortnite, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm just saying. I think a majority of Epic's income came from the engine prior to Fortnite even being. Two hundred ninety-three million last month. You think? You think? You think Activision Blizzard's COD itself is doing more than two hundred ninety-three million last month? COD by itself? Yeah. No. No. <clears throat> but Activision. Candy Crush. But to. Wait, double, what's Candy like, Crush? Double, double Under double. Activision? Yeah, they're owned by King, uh, King Mobile stuff. Uh, King Mobile stuff. Um, but it's like, the, the stuff is <coughs> absurd. Well, I just, I just think Fortnite's the first, <coughs> it's like the, or Epic's like the first company to just be like, hey, like, we have all this money. Instead of throwing pennies over here to get the esports people to shut up, why don't we do something? I feel like a lot of it's like this. I feel like the way it's going to go is you're a tournament organizer. You want to run a Fortnite event. You figure out the logistics, how you're going to, how it's going to go, stuff like that. You could sell sponsors on it, whatever. As long as it's under Epic approval, they can then be like this. Well, here's what you're doing. Here's this. We're willing to offer you $150,000 for your prize pool for your regional event. And then they can go, well, we are doing this. We have these names. We would like 200000 And then Epic can be like, Okay, you know what? This is an Epic Games partnership tournament with Fortnite. It's got this level of quality, and Epic just provided a $200,000 prize pool for that event. So, so let's say Ninja, obviously he just threw his own tournament that <coughs> you cast it. Yeah. So what you're saying is that he himself could maybe throw one All and, I know and, is and get the prize pool from them? Looking at it, they stress the word inclusive, which makes me think that there could be tournaments on obviously every platform. And then... It also makes me think because they only reference prize pool, there's so much interest for people to run tournaments. Yeah. Well, as long as you provide a quality level, there is no negativity. You don't put the game in a bad light, all this stuff, and you're willing to work with Epic. Yeah. I feel like they're just going to be like this. Oh, so you want to run a local in South in, in, in Southern California, like Esports Arena, for example. They want to run an Oakland local with these 150 whatever players, yada, yada, yada. <coughs> we'll give you $10,000 for it. That comes out of that $100 million prize pool. You're telling me... ESL wants to run a massive global scale with all the top pro teams, these big names, this huge budget in a stadium. We'll give you a million for it. They can run $2 million worth of Fortnite tournaments every weekend. They can run twice the size of a COD Champs every weekend in prize pool. <laughs> I feel like that wouldn't even be good for it, having well, a bunch of tournaments. Well, that's, but I think, I think it just goes down to there's going to be Fortnite tournaments that happen in in, yeah, in, I, in Southern California that we don't even know about. It's yeah. kind of like Epic will is is willing to sponsor and to to boost up these local tournaments. Now. But the, but there will also be obviously the heavy hitter tournaments. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, Wait. So are you saying Epic is putting what was it two hundred? 
hundred million into uh, the prize pool. They're putting a hundred million just like into kind of esports into Fortnite. And like they, it's even they s- took a hundred million dollars and they set it aside and said that's our esports budget. esports prize pool. Okay, prize prize pool. Pool. Prize, but are, prize pool are they saying like some of that money could go to the random tournament in California? We never we, hear we about. We don't, we don't we know, know yet. No okay. Okay. But to um, me, that's what makes sense from yeah. what they're saying. I'm yeah, interested to see how it like even works I as think far they as like run a league. One hundred million dollar tournament. That yeah, awesome. that'd be smart. <laughs> imagine, imagine someone's like wins one. They're like, "Fuck, played Fortnite. I'm out." Like, they, nah, they win that. And they're like, "I'm done, bro." There's no way that, that I don't. I don't no, think that. That, People, no. Be, what um? Uh, what do you think it does? All right, so let's break it down. So from an esports perspective, compete. they come in, huh? I'd compete. You you play thirtieth, and you're that, still like that was, oh, my, that was gonna be my that was gonna be my follow up. I won five hundred thousand. That's gonna be my follow up question. Like from for, from a player standpoint, what what does that look like? But let, I, I I'm a firm believer that if the second that somebody elevates the bar, the bar is set, and then then everybody else has to try hard to to be at that at that same competitive uh, level. Because if you if you think about the the amount of talent, let's say the let's say th- think about all the PC players in the world that exist, right? Let, let's talk about from you know the the simples to all the way to uh, the maniacs, the maniacs of the world, right? Uh, you know, from 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 well, come on. I don't even know what that means. I just yeah. said maniacs. Let's, let's <laughs> just, just say to the jacks. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is that I think the like low the tiers. Of, I get it. No, not low tiers. No, no, not, not low tiers. I'm just talking about. Uh, I'm talking about you know PC players in Counter Strike to Halo players in 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 that. That's what I meant. Um, as as an esport, obviously you try to protect your superstar. You try to protect your your. LeBron James is to not start an argument, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> I literally said that to, to avoid. I, uh, no, you're fine. You're fine. It's okay. Water is wet. Period. Okay? Water's not wet. Anyway, uh, Michael Jordan's the best ever. Uh, so cute. Where was I going? What were you saying? Uh, the simples, the Halo players, to yes. protecting your superstars. Protect, protecting your superstars. New okay, let's say, let's say this. Let's say, th- think about, think about uh, formal, for example. It's a Halo, Halo professional. Uh, think about enable Halo professional, really po- Nick, Halo professional, really popular personalities in, in Halo, but some of them transfer their talents over to Call of Duty because Call of Duty was offering a little bit more. That hurt the Halo scene for the time that it did. Uh, you know, they're, they're still trying to recover from that and they're, they're making, you know, great moves towards, uh, towards you know, becoming what they once were, okay? Um, Are they? Okay, let, let, besides the point. Okay. okay, think about Call of Duty and what would happen if somebody like Seth, and, and I spent time with Seth, while this announcement happened, we went to dinner with Seth and we were we discussed this at, at length. What, you know, after accomplishing somebody like Crim Six accomplished everything that he needed to accomplish, someone like Karma, you know, no longer on the teams, no longer for the for for the time being, no longer competing in Call of Duty. As a Call of Duty professional, do you say thank you, Call of Duty? I did what I what I what I had to do, and you, and you say I, I surpassed all of my goals. Now it's time for me to move on and to lose. The Nate shots, as Call of Duty did, and then to lose a, a scumpy as as it could, because if you are scumpy and there's a twenty five million dollar price PS four offering, PS four offering, what keeps you in your esport as a professional esports player? And by professional means that you need to. This is your. And it's, this is your thing. The, the the craziest part about that is is that. <clears throat> every single time we get a ch- we get a COD champs every year, it's like, it's like, like thank thanks for the million dollar prize pool, like that's really cool, but and it, and and there was a time when that was insane, like like COD XP yeah, two thousand eleven like, yeah two thousand and eighteen bro <laughs> yeah exactly, but it's it's like every single year we're like well why can't why can't a Call of Duty be made and already have skins that you can buy and the money that you get from those skins that are esports specific skins go to a prize <coughs> pool. Imagine if Call of Duty had a crowdfunded prize pool the, the same way Dota does, the same way Halo did. Halo had a two point six million dollar prize pool because of crowdfunding. Like it makes no sense how <clears throat> a billion dollar company throws a million dollars 
every year for one tournament. Or, I mean, obviously they do a lot of other things, but for one specific tournament. So to be clear, it's like a four million dollar pool, right, for Call of Duty a year? Prize pool, yeah. Yeah. And okay. Then there's obviously the ex the other budget of running everything. Yeah. 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 Okay. So which, which, just isn't, say, yeah, yeah. which isn't easy, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, Epic, who, other than Gears, have they had a, a competitive game? Paragon. Ooh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Paragon, right? Lost uh, Myth, lost uh, a whole bunch of other people to, to Fortnite, right? And, and this is a reality, right? And they lost it for free. There was nothing being thrown in that specific uh, category. Now, my, my, my question is this. To, Paragon's to, been shut down. Yeah, so my, my, my question <laughs> really? is this. My, my, my question is this, picking off of, of what you just said. At, at what point do you say, you know what, I've accomplished everything that I've accomplished and I know that this that this thing is, it cares so much about me personally because this is my livelihood and you see it like that because you're a professional player and this is, I mean, this, this thing cares for esports and I'm an esports player while there's other things that care about it but maybe not as much as they should and then think about, think about it from the, from, think about, think about this, okay, as Fortnite. I'm going to create an exclusive Fortnite specific skin, paid, done, paid for whatever tournament. Yeah. You know, like it, it literally takes nothing to fund. You're, you're printing money. Uh, the ESL, the, the ESL one for for Fortnite is going to be a a kid with a headset, and it's going to say ESL one on the on the jersey or whatever, and your pickaxe is going to be uh, uh, a, a, a keyboard. Or a trophy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, a trophy. Like, how cr did you buy the Halo optic skins? Yeah, and I've never played Halo, but I was logged in to buy it. Exactly. I bought the Halo optic skins. There's tons of optic fans. Even out the there. Gears one. Yeah, I didn't buy the Gears one. I never played that game. Even but. just other pros buy the optic. Yeah, it's, skin. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, that if they released right now. Late in the game, if they said, "Hey, champs this year is going to be crowdfunded," first of all, David would be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, if they said champs this year is going to be crowdfunded, here are all these optic and phase and and TK skins. I'd get on World War Two right now yeah. and and buy those skins and maybe have a league play hype stream or something yeah. like that. And it's that easy. And yeah. and it it still hasn't been done. And think about the random fan that's like me in Fortnite, right? That shit, I already bought 10 skins, I might as well have the entire collection. Yeah. You know, think about the random fans like, well, I already have the the bacon skin, I already have the diamond skin, I'm just gonna buy all of the esports team skins, just because, and I don't even know, oh, I'm like, oh shit, Splice has a really dope logo, this is now my new favorite team. I think a close example of that is like the uh, the Olympic skins when they got released, if you remember, there was like the eight countries, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, I can't only have the French or the German yeah. ones, I need to have Really? Them. I chose China. <laughs> 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 and that's it. I'm just saying that's how people thought. Yeah. I only picked the U.S. one. I only picked uh, the English one. I didn't get in the U.S. Um, one. Yeah, there was no Mexico. So next, next one. All right? How they decide I'm sure that? Some with World Cup. Like you tell me, there's not gonna be World Cup skins. The there's World not Cup gonna skins. be an American one. There's not oh, or an Italian yeah. one. Which are the two teams that I actually care for because I watched a lot of football in my life. Yeah. Um, couldn't name me one player. Um, All right. So the question is, as a scumpy. Yeah. What justifies you? Nothing. Besides the love for the game of Nothing. Call of Duty. He doesn't even love the game anymore. So it's like... Yeah, when people like... Like the love of the game... It simply comes down to this. Oh. It simply comes down to this. Well, he'll love the next one. If there's 25 million offered for PS4 or mm -hmm. Xbox, whichever game, and you are an Xbox Halo Pro or Gears Pro or you are a Call of Duty Pro on PS4, and you look at it and you go, I think it simply comes down to... If the scumpies and the crims and these people t decide to make a switch to PS4 Fortnite, then the people remaining in the game who are also considering it begin to go, well, now it's going to be easier for me. To my lose. easier road to the million is here. So would I rather be content with an easier road to a twenty-fifth of the prize pool, or all I need to do is be top eight to make as much as winning champs mm -hmm. would be? Because that's what it's going to be like. Yeah. It's going to be I like just figured you out place my eighth. You place eighth. In Fortnite, yeah. and you make probably just as much as a winner of champs, right? Yeah. You go on the Halo side. If you're an Xbox or Gears Pro, and you're going 25 million now for, you know, Xbox Fortnite. The, the, these are the best players on the console. There's no other games on console that people are rivaling. They are the best. Yes, there's the Fortnite console players itself, but outside of that, 
in raw but skill on Fortnite, the controller. Even the Fortnite console players were players or other players like yeah. at one point. It's not like it's I think if you're anyone who's ever been pro at a game on a controller, you are not competing on P on PC unless you are literally ridiculous on PC. Yeah, yeah, unless you're like, like the way that Ninja did it. Yeah, <laughs> like right now you're like for example, Nate Shot, someone who ha is competent enough on the uh, on on PC like us. He's we're all good, but you throw him on a controller. And overall, I feel like his ability to get of up course, in the yeah. tiers is higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're telling me that even if you can have a chance at a top eight to make a cool 1.2 mil Damn. across the year. Do I got to start playing with a controller? No. I mean, I, I think you're nasty with What if PC, I competed, like, though? No, but you're As, actually... But, but I, you're, you have... You're good enough on a... Yeah. I'm good, but like I wouldn't be like one of the best. I'm not one of. The, I'm not gonna be one of the best on PC. You, you also gotta realize though, you, on I mean, a controller, be, maybe. Like, what if I could be like one of the best? Who has won more Halo championships? You or Ninja? The same amount. As Ninja, I don't even. I don't know. I think it's the same amount. Ninja has had so many years of of H1 PUBG, him being good on yeah. this, right? So you you just started essentially. Right? Uh, if, well, no, because you played H1. Well, what I'm saying is that, if, and I think you're good enough on, on PC, but if your native language, muscle memory language, is the controller, you're, like he said, you're just going to increase that ability. That's what I'm saying. Like, what if I went to PS4, Xbox, like, would I go from here to, like, actually, I'd be a myth that's ninja? How I, that's how I think it's As a controller? To be. That's yeah, how yeah. I think it's close. I agree. Like, yeah. if there's huge go, controller go, tournaments... I would go Xbox, though, because Nick Merckx is on PS4, boy. I'll take second. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's almost closer to the point of, like, if you're playing with a controller, you're almost considering competing in both consoles. But yeah. Because at that point, yes, What's there's the a difference? different feel, but... Not, yeah. yeah. There's 50 million offered for console. You better believe... I got my Xbox loading up a lobby here. I die, and I'm loading up the next one on yeah. PS4 right here. You're about to see the crate, like, be, the because I don't know if you guys know about console, but they, first of all, it was just console. Then they made something called Combat Pro, which was, like, pretty cool, and, and Blake and George, like, got super good. Yeah. And I was like, damn. What is then that? Then they made something called Builder Pro. Yep. Where they, uh, they have, like, certain buttons. I think it's the D-pad. I don't know. D just basically now, instead of building, you have to go, like, right, right, and then be able to place. Yeah. It's like your buttons are each now mapped to wall, ramp, to floor. Wall. Okay. So Blake and George, like, way out build me, and I'm sitting there like, Yeah, I, I, I've been considering doing that too, man, because I can't, I still to this day, I scroll. And I am so in love with this game, and I am the absolute, like, worst. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, like, when I, when I, when I outshoot somebody, even if they're building ramps, and I, like, and, and, and this happens, I, I swear to you, it does. I take out an entire team. I feel like, I'm like, I, if I knew how to build, I'd be that much better. And I can't, because well, thing is, I can't do this. To switch it's toggle guns. I bet you you're... Because that used to happen to me, and then I started learning how to build, and then I would overbuild and overthink about it. Yeah. And that's what people say about uh, Nick Merckx, is that he... Well, now he's starting to build more with because of Builder Pro. He's but, finally switched. Yeah, but uh, for, the, for a while, he would just build to a point to get himself in a good position, and then he would just yeah. gun people. And so that's why, like, there's a difference. Like, don't overbuild... But you've got to find like that happy medium, which I mean, is what you found really. What TP, like, TP and I, we we play so much, but like <clears> TP, <throat> the last couple weeks, like, bro, your building has gotten ridiculously good now, and it's like, even after hundreds, finally, which is crazy to think, to tomorrow by tomorrow's the end of tomorrow's stream, finally Fortnite will be my most streamed game. Even after all this time, Black Ops Three was still more time. That's how much I grinded during that mm -hmm. year, like streams. Um, it's like five hundred hours almost, um, but. With my build, like I, I just have like these little like breakthrough moments, and now like my newest one is really getting better at figuring out how to get the high ground. And there's this one move that I've continued to do now, where and you see top builders do it all the time, but you have to like do like this double ramp essentially, where to build over them. To build over yeah. them, you have to like oh, you have to like you, you're trying to keep with them, but no, instead of doing that, you, you need to like ramp, ramp. And as they try to, like, jump up to build more, they're like, oh, my God, what the hell just happened? Yeah. And I've gotten really, really good at that now to where if I get in a build fight with someone and I use that maneuver once, I'm like, okay, this is my high ground. And then at that point, 
when you get to the high ground, you become you're essentially a reactionary builder. So he's trying to go this way. Yeah. You Second match, nature. You, you match yeah. it floors. Yeah. They now try to re ramp down this way. You match. You match where they go, and then when they're like trying to just figure out what the hell they can do, that's when you go okay. He can't get the high ground for the next five seconds. You try to shoot out some of his stuff. You try to get some free damage on yeah. him. Yeah, I saw a picture today of of a, of a mat. It was, like, it was like four teams in one circle. That was what Clay's was talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. how every competitive Fortnite game ends. It's yeah. the worst thing ever. Yeah, it is. The, it, it is the worst thing ever. Um, but at the same time, like I, you, you just can't stop watching. I mean, personally, I can't stop watching. Never, besides even Call of Duty for the past three years, I don't watch. I don't watch streams of players playing. Fortnite makes me make, makes me want to watch. But before we get away from all that, and, and we're running we're running out low on time here, but I, I, the question still remains, and you guys, none of you have said, what makes you as a Clayster of the world, as a, as a Crim Six of the world, oh, yeah. stick nothing into Call of Duty and not go and try to build a better life right for now, yourself. Right now, Epic Games has respected esports more than Activision has in the past ten years. Uh, it's a very, very tough thing to to say because I don't think you can also. Pe I, I had this conversation with a bunch of people at the wedding this weekend. This could also be viewed as a negative for esports mm -hmm. because now they're. It's like it's like a, it's essentially like poaching players from a team. Like yeah, how that's frowned upon. Yeah, yeah, they can now they're now poaching players from everywhere. And yes, but, okay. yes, that is a thing from games. But yes, that is a thing, right? I, and I get it. But at the same time, there's no game in the world that has the the pull in regards to what Epic does. And then Flex's hundred mil is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that now every game is having to go like, are we about to lose? All of our superstars, but in that situation, like, there's just no ecosystem to match it. It's not even. It's not even this game versus that game. It's not even like this. Maybe I'm thinking about it strictly in there Call is, of Duty. I don't know. So like, like the Halo eSport was already at a low point. <clears throat> yeah, there is no is well. way they can match yeah, yeah. What, what Fortnite does. So for now, for Fortnite to just say, "Here's 100 million dollars with no other info," and now like you're telling me, let's say 50 percent of the faces of Halo already a struggling eSport. Yeah. Could now just go just because, no matter what, whether Microsoft loves Halo or not, the crowdfunding, everything, yeah. they cannot match that no matter what. So it can be viewed as like a, yeah. well, well, is that the last, is that, could that be the last strike for Halo? Could that, that be true. the last strike for Imagine other if esports? just like, I was definitely snake bite, that. Royal, t Royal 2, Lethal, Shotzi, all like the top Halo players, Scump. It doesn't mean Crim that, Six. It, yeah. all, everyone just goes to Fortnite. It doesn't mean they like, like what it happens less. to Halo you know what or it doesn't, mean they, it doesn't mean their developers want to support esports less. It literally just is like the yeah. nature of the game. They you cannot match 100 million in prize pool. Some games could get could could begin to do that, but for what Fortnite is, more more more, more importantly, okay. And this is this is what uh, what I always preach to to everybody that, that does come on the team. Never before, besides. And I'm talking esports specifically, okay? So I won't mention Minecraft. I won't mention Grand Theft Auto. Call of Duty set you up, set a platform for you to have content to trend, you know, to, to be a YouTuber. Okay? We're living in an age where Minecraft-like numbers has the possibility and the ability to become a competitive game, which will then turn the competitive players into superstars, which will then allow them to pick and choose what sort of content they can create just off of that very specific audience. This game is literally building personalities, where before you yourself had to be the one that builds the personalities. Optic had to literally become a Minecraft team in order, or my, Minecraft players' personalities to grow to the to where we grew. We literally had to be vloggers to transcend that and, and be bigger than, than, than what we were in Call of Duty. Right now, Fortnite has had the ability to shortcut all of that and just off of one video game, just off of highlights of your video, create these personalities, which can now be like, you know what? I'm gonna open up a second channel for vlogging. Imagine if Ninja, with a very successful YouTube channel and a very successful Twitch channel, decided to hire a camera guy to follow <coughs> him to the store, to follow him to, you know, walk his dogs, whatever, and to literally have like this this vlogging persona. What? What's happening? No, he's joking. Like, oh, I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, but but that's what I'm saying. This so from from an ecosystem standpoint, think about if I'm a player 
and I see what I can do, not just in competitive. Like if you're telling me, it's like, oh my God, I'm gonna make $1.2 million if I come in eighth place. But then on top of that, I can start my vlog channel, a cooking channel, a racing channel, a build a car channel, a toy channel. Start a channel? Period. For, for a competitive and, player and, in general? And, and literally double down on the amount of income that you can create and take advantage, true advantage from the time that you're 20, to the time that you're 26 and be set for the rest of your life to where you don't have to do a thing that you don't want to for monetary incentive. What does it keep you as a player in that specific uh, experience? All I'm saying is every single competitive person that plays a shooter at some point, whatever game it is, is, is has to consider. very much considering it. It's irresponsible not to. Especially if you're a player for a team and they want to enter Fortnite, and you can kind of be like, hey, we knew my road was ending here, or, or, or you know, things aren't going too well here. I'm great at this. Let me try to be the face, let me, let me try to be the face of it. And it's kind of like, okay, you're like a seamless transition. You know what I'm saying? Nick, the captain of the Fortnite team? Karma? I mean, we joke, but like, <laughs> who's joking? No, 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 I, we, we joke about like, oh, this is the pro Fortnite team, yeah, uh, yeah, but, but you're telling me they run like an influencer slash, you know, hey, you know, we're trying to get orgs to send teams to, to these games. Oh, we'd for it sure win as far as like cr content creator well, entertainers. Technically, well, technically the TSM squad is, are their entertainers. Yeah. So you guys. Yeah, well, like Daquan and them? Yeah. You guys wouldn't for sure we, win. We'd get second. But it would be you two. No, no. Okay. Oh, they, they wouldn't even be competing in the same place. Who would be your fourth? I think, I mean, I always say Damon. Yeah. Yeah, but, David or Will, right? Yeah, but, but TSM does you, you guys don't even have to play on the same platform. So those content creators and those winners from TSM don't necessarily have to compete in the same league you're competing because you're going to be playing console. And again, it's so <laughs> <inclusive> <laughs> and there's so much there's so much stuff. We but like, they literally have the prize pool to say, hey, we're running a pro tournament, and then we're going to run, yeah, we're going to run a girls only tournament with the Fortnite league. We're going to run a this. Dude, I bet you that shit would pop too. Look, I don't I don't I don't I don't like talking bad about, you know, leagues or, Damn, or, or an all girls tournament. Or they already do it. They already have a custom server. They've done it twice now with Twitch. Yeah, Twitch that. does a like ladies night spelled Fortnite and they get literally a full custom server of all yeah. female well, streamers and it's like super successful. One of the things that I want to do this year is create the 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 30 plus League, League, right, <laughs> for, for Call of yeah, Duty, yeah. you know, where I can be, like, obviously Jordan because I'm the best 30-plus-year-old that's out there. Uh, mm. Name one 30-year-old that's James. better than me. In <laughs> he's a better 30-plus-year-old. Yeah. Probably, he's probably better at COD, too. Yeah, true. In Fortnite. No. You did that to yourself. You did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> As a 30 right. plus year old reality. Listen, anyway, uh, we're going to end the, the, the podcast here. If you guys want to continue, uh, yeah, continue the conversation, you can reach us on all of our social media outlets that are listed in the description down below. Uh, I'm interested to see. Please tweet at us uh, your, your opinion on, on what is, what is if you were in the position that some of these professional players are from console and PC, think about the shrouds of the world. Think about you know the, the people that just retired. What, what, is, what is your next move here? Is Ninja uh, going to compete? No, I don't so, think so. Ninja? I, I mean, I, I, if I'm Ninja, I start my own team. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. The, 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 you think he's got enough pull to start his own 100 team? 100 Ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even get it out. Yeah. That was really, like, it, it started off really serious, but it did <laughs> uh, Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Leave a like rating. It really does help us. Soon enough, we'll have all of these on... Uh, Everything. iTunes, hopefully one time, one day. Didn't we already have that on there? Anyway, we'll see you guys on the next one.